Well, hey, church, I am so glad that you're joining with us today on our online campus or wherever you might be watching today. Welcome. It is, can you believe it, our fourth week in our series called Ready, Set, Rest. You know, Pastor Justin talked to us about how rest without Jesus really isn't rest at all. Pastor Rachel reminded us to choose the important the Sabbath time with Jesus over the urgent things in life. And, and just last week, Pastor Jeremiah reminded us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Know that God's rest comes from living fear-free. So today we're going to realize what God wants to do for you and for me in our times of rest. So go ahead and, and turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 3. And while you're turning there in your Bibles or your Bible app, I want to tell you a story about holes. You know, the ones in your backyard that when you're mowing, you, you break your ankle. You know, oddly enough, something that Emily did when she was eight or nine years old, she kind of went through this period of wanting to dig holes in the yard, probably from, you know, watching Animal Planet or, or some show about, I don't know, finding dinosaur bones. But, but I would be in, in like deep activity or thought and, and she would walk up to me and ask, Dad, can I go dig a hole? And, and for the first couple of times, you know, it was just surprising. It caught me totally off guard. And I'd be like, uh, you know, sure, Why? And Emily would just kind of, you know, shrug her shoulders. And I'm like, you know, fine, just make sure you fill them back in when you're done. And she would go dig multiple holes across the backyard. And there were times I would come home from work and there would be dozens or, or more just filled in holes all over our, our, our backyard. And I'd just maybe sometimes come home and there'd be a shovel laying on the deck that I had to put away. She was... She was looking to discover something under the surface. And for her, you know, dinosaur bones, whatever. But as an eight-year-old, she never grabbed the rake to discover what was buried deep. You know, she, she didn't want to find something that I dropped. She wanted to find something all on her own. And here's what I want us to grab from her little dinosaur hunt. She never once drug out the rake and just went all over the backyard to dig for dinosaurs with that rake. You know, a rake can move dirt, but it, but it really just rearranges the top few inches of the soil. You know, you don't grab it when it's time to dig a hole. But a shovel, though, man, you can dig a really good hole in no time. A shovel can go deep. All right, you tracking with me so far? Because here we go. In our times of rest, in and with the Lord... The question becomes, are we settling for just this surfacey relationship? Or are we desiring to go deep in our knowledge and our relationship with him? Let me ask it like this. Are you bringing out a shovel to dig deep with him? Or are you satisfied just to drag a rake around a little bit and call it good? I have to admit, there's so many times I'm tempted to come before the Lord with a rake, you know, and I maybe just spend five minutes with the Lord and I'm, I'm reading my Bible, but at the same time, I'm looking at my watch like, oh, you know, I'm running out of time, or maybe I'm praying and I'm thinking about some, somebody else or something else, or I'm, I'm in a great story from Scripture and I just think, oh yeah, I know how this story goes, and I kind of disengage, it's like I just rearrange the topsoil. I move a few things around, but, but I'm telling you, that is not how we find the buried treasure of God's word. Man, it's not with a rake. I think about listening to other leaders and, and other people as they unpack truth that the Lord's revealed to them. And it's good. You know, it's exciting to hear them share the new treasure that they've discovered in the Lord. And I'm thankful like moments like this as we learn from others deep digging in their time with Jesus. But I want you to hear this. You and I were created to know God and to know him increasingly, to pick up our own shovel and dig deep and discover who he is because he desires to reveal himself to you. 
You got to catch this. You can know him. And I want to encourage you today in your times of rest with the Lord to get out that shovel, to dig deep with God because he has incredible things in store for you. Now, did you realize that God wants to hang out with you? Like he thinks you're pretty cool and he wants to connect with you and, and lead you. Jesus said it this way in Revelation chapter three and verse 20. He said this. He said, look, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and we'll share a meal together as friends. God wants to spend time and just connect with you. In fact, right now, he's knocking on the door of your heart and he wants you to hear him and open that door to him because God is speaking to you. Look at what Job 33, verse 14 says. It says this, For God speaks now one way and now another, though no one perceives it. Man, he's saying, he's always talking, he's always speaking and confirming his words, but oftentimes we miss it because we're not paying attention, we're not listening, or we're listening for the wrong things. So I want you to know that God wants you to hear him today. And God is speaking to you, and I want you to perceive it. Now, in our text today that we're going to dive into, we have two examples of what it looks like to be hearing the Lord. Samuel, a boy who later would become a prophet, is one character. And Eli, the priest, is another. So let's go ahead and look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. It says, the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Now, Eli was the high priest, and, and Samuel would have been his, his apprentice, okay? It goes on, it says, in those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the Ark of the Covenant was, and then the Lord called to Samuel. See, God's trying to get his attention, but Samuel doesn't know his voice yet. So Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and he said, here I am. You, you called me. But look, look at this. Eli said, I, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So, so Samuel goes back and he lies down. Verse six says, again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and he went to Eli and he said, hey, here I am. You called me. And Eli again said, I, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel, verse 7, did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So look at verse 8. A third time the Lord calls Samuel. And Samuel got up and he goes to Eli and says, Listen, you old coot, here I am. Quit calling me. And then Finally, it says, Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go lie down. And if he calls you saying, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and he laid down in his place. In verse 10, the Lord comes again. He stands there and he calls again, Samuel, Samuel. Now, I found verse 8 really interesting. Like, it really jumped off the page for me. Because Eli suddenly realizes over the course of this, this time period, maybe an hour, maybe a little more, that it was God that was speaking to Samuel. See, Eli was the high priest. Eli was supposed to be the one that was the teacher, the mentor, the coach. And, and if we look at a broader context of this story and over the chapter that leads up to it, we find that Eli had long ago let other things take the place of what God, uh, uh, God's desires were for Eli's life. Because Eli had actually allowed evil practices to, to sneak into the temple again and again. And his, his own sons were serving as priests but they had no regard for the Lord. In fact, they slept with women who were serving at the, temp, uh, at the tabernacle. They cheated. They extorted people who were bringing their offerings. And uh, uh, Eli, he knew about this, but he, but he didn't do anything. I think he said something once to him, but he didn't follow up with it. He just let it happen. And I believe that we could use this analogy that Eli 
had allowed the noise of those around him to push away the truth, God's voice, his word. He allowed the external noise to crowd out the voice of God, and, and eventually that kept Eli from doing what he knew was right, and it affected his ability to hear God. See, Samuel heard him as a boy, but Eli didn't even think it was possible that God would speak anymore. And I want you to hear this today, because it's so important. If you ignore God's voice of conviction, you're going to miss his voice of direction. So church, you need to know, just like Eli, that God is speaking to you. He's always been in the business of connecting one-on-one -on -one with his children, me and you. Man, do you believe that? Because from the Garden of Eden through all of the book of Revelation till right now, today, God has been and is speaking to his children. Man, you need to know that denying that voice of God like, like Eli did, whether you're hearing it and ignoring him or whether you choose just not to believe that he's actually speaking to you, you need to know that denial leads to deafness. So when you deny that God is speaking to you, it will lead to an inability to hear his voice any longer. That's where Eli found himself. And, and because of it, the first time the boy Samuel ever hears from the Lord Turns out it's a word of judgment against his teacher, Eli. Look at verse 12. Check out what it says there. It says, at that time, this is God speaking, at that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family. Man, personally, I, I just find that so sobering. I never want to forget God's voice. And church, God is speaking to you. He wants you to hear from him. So how do we do that? How do we practically just hear from God better? And I'm going to share with, with you today four super practical ways that you can hear from the Lord in your times of rest. Number one, write this down. Get ready. Get away from the noise. Get away from the noise. I, I want you to notice how Jesus spent time praying in the gospel. Look at Mark chapter one and verse 35. Look at what it says. It says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, he left the house, and he went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Listen, there was literally no like natural places in the day for him to get away, so he got up before the sun ever came up to connect with his father. And another great example is in Luke chapter 5. Look at verse 16 with me. It says, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places, secluded places, and he prayed. Why? Because he was constantly being swarmed by the masses, and he had to get away from the noise. Eli, on the other hand, he listened to the noise instead of God's voice. And I'm telling you, it's hard to hear God's voice when there's so much noise around us. And I know my personal tendency, man, I admit it, it's, it's to fill the quiet times in my life with things, with noise. And, and so often, God doesn't shout. He speaks to us like he spoke to Elijah in that gentle whisper, that, that still small voice. And you, you need to get away from the noise in order to hear it. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Ashley preached and she reminded us that sometimes God brings us to the desert so the hush can be heard. Listen, you've got to know that your spiritual enemy loves to speak through that noise. It's so easy for him to sneak a lie into our hearts when there's so much noise around, because that's what he does. He lies. You know, John chapter 8, it says when he lies, the devil, he speaks his native language. He says he's a liar. He's a father of lies. So that begs this question. Are you drawing for your life, for, for your direction, from a source other than God himself? Are there other voices that maybe you're listening to? Maybe you've, you've come to this place where you've given up on hearing from God because you, you don't believe that he speaks. If you're depending on something else as the source of, 
of the renewing and the strengthening of, of, of who you are, you, you'll, you're not going to realize that his power and his presence slips away. That's what happened to Eli. Over time, he failed to recognize God's voice and eventually was unable to hear it any longer. Now, I, I want that consequence just to, to sink in for us for a moment because I don't want that for you and I don't want that for me. So let's not be okay with noise anymore. Let's instead decide to master it. And may we find the clarity that comes from moments spent with a father that wants to speak to you because he's got treasure for you. I call it nuggets of gold. That's what I always kind of call it with my, with my family. He's got these, these places in Scripture that he's, he's excited to reveal to you. It will value our time with him and we'll push through the noise. I love what Philippians chapter 3 says. In verse 8, it says, Everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I've discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I can gain Christ. Listen, to gain the treasure, you got to leave the trash. So to hear God's voice, you got to get away from the noise, all right? Number two, write this down. Prepare your heart. You got to prepare your heart. Look with me at 2 Chronicles chapter 7 in verse 14, because it really gives us this, this instruction. It's pretty clear on how to prepare our hearts so that God could speak with us and move in our life. Look with me. At just in verse 14, it says this, If my people who are called by my name, called by my name, the, the first thing is we have to have this attitude that we belong. Man, when you're seeking the Lord, remember to come as a son or a daughter of the king. Man, that's who you are. You belong to him. You're called by his name, and he wants to speak with you. So come with expectation. It goes on, it says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Man, catch that, humble. So the next thing, man, we gotta come with this attitude of humility. You know, James tells us that God opposes the proud and he shows favor to the humble. And, and you know, so often we, we treat prayer as this time where we're telling God what we need. But prayer is really a time for God to tell us what we need. And that's the way, the way the direction of prayer should work. So, so let's not rush that and get that turned around and said, come in this posture that says, God, I want to hear what you want me to hear, not what's comfortable or easy or what I want to hear. OK, so he's saying if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. If we want big results, man, we got to go deep. Man, that's when we got to come with that shovel and, and spend the time and seek him. Really get after it. Look at Jeremiah 29, 12. It says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Man, we got to look for him wholeheartedly. Because scripture says, then we'll find him. You come with that shovel, you dig deep in his word and in that time that you're meditating with him. Now, lastly, God says, if my people will turn, say that with me, turn from their wicked ways. See, if we don't listen to God's voice of conviction, there's probably not gonna be any voice of direction, right? So we've gotta come with this repentant heart, not arguing about our sin, but instead confessing it and turning away from it. See, really God's voice of conviction is him saying, hey, repent, turn from that garbage, let go of it and come back to me. A lot of times in ministry over the years, I've heard people say, I just don't feel like God's you know, speaking. I'm not hearing God's voice. And I'll ask, well, did you listen to him the last time he spoke to you? Like, did you follow through with it? Because if you didn't, you probably need to go back there and complete that direction. 
See, church, if you come as a child of God in humility and you're going deep and and you're seeking God's face with that repentant heart, God says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I'm telling you, if you want to hear his voice, number one, you need to get away from the noise. Number two, you got to prepare your heart. And next, the third thing is listen. Now, that seems super simple. But listening takes time, and you may actually need to learn his voice. Think back to our text in 1 Samuel. Verse 7 said that Samuel did not yet know the Lord. He didn't yet recognize his voice. There was this process he had to go through to learn it. Now, don't worry. God's Holy Spirit inside of you will help you to learn. In fact, go with me to John chapter 10 and look what Jesus said. Jesus said this in verse 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate. That's the shepherd. That's Jesus. And the sheep, that's us, will listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he's brought out all uh, of his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they'll never follow a stranger. In fact, they'll run away because they don't recognize a stranger's voice. Listen, we got to train ourselves to hear God's voice and his spirit will help us because honestly, he speaks to us in so many different ways. Man, you got to be ready to listen. Listen, he speaks to us through his, his word, his living and active word. The Bible is God's word. It's the words that he's giving you. He's, he's written them down. It's the greatest way you're going to learn his voice. He also speaks through his people. He speaks through the sermons. Like, like today, right now, God's speaking to you. He speaks through encouragements and through God-given wisdom of other Christians. And he speaks to your spirit. And he'll give you moments where there's these impressions where you're like, you know, I should probably really listen to that. I I should probably do this. And you'll just have this peace that comes over your spirit as, as God speaks to you. You know, God speaks through times of conviction. He speaks through a music, like, like worship music. And he speaks through circumstances in our lives, sometimes in dreams. Sometimes it's through prayer or supernatural peace. The point is God wants to speak to you and he is speaking to you. So be listening because when you do, Isaiah chapter 30, 21 says this, whether you turn to the, to the right or whether you turn to the left, there'll be a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. So lastly, if you think you've heard from the Lord, you need to test what you hear. Because listen, we're not perfect. We're humans, and sometimes you'll end up hearing whatever it is that you really want to hear. There's that temptation, right? So you need to test what you hear, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 says, Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. And hold on to what's good. So test it against God's word. If it doesn't line up with scripture, it's not from the Lord. You could also ask a wise, trusted brother or sister in Christ and just kind of be like, Hey, I feel like God's leading me this way. Does that sound like something God would say? You can also, you know, as the Lord's putting an impression upon you of a direction, you can maybe just ask yourself, hey, if I I put this in words, would God say something like that to me? Because listen, church, God is speaking to you. He wants you to hear him. He's got this buried treasure, these glimpses of deeper understanding and a closer relationship for you. So don't you dare settle for that rake when it comes to know him more. Listen, take the time, spend it with him, pray and and see, grab that shovel this week and dig deep. Take the time to humble yourself, to repent, to pray and seek and hear the voice of God in your times of rest. Let's be a people that will dig deep and and unearth the rest and and that refreshing and and fresh vision that comes only from the Lord. 
Oh, friends, he's there right now, knocking on the door of your heart. And all you have to do to hear him is open the door and listen. I promise you this week, you're going to be surrounded by noise, a lot of it. It will demand of you. It will trick you. It will tempt you to pay attention to it. It might be in the form of a crazy schedule at work. It might be trying to answer all the questions that your kids have of going back to school. It's probably honestly going to be some of the same things that stole your attention last week. But I want you to believe this week that God is speaking to you. And I want you to expect and to experience for yourself God speaking into your rest. So as we rest in Jesus this week, will you make sure, number one, yoke yourself to Christ this week. Number two, make sure that the important things stay above the urgent things. Will you remember that Jesus hasn't given you a spirit of fear, all to bring you into a rest with him so you can hear him and that you can know him. You know, I think back to when I was a child and Whenever I had the opportunity, whether it was on vacation to my grandparents' house or when they were visiting at, at our, our family's house, I really just loved to hang out with my grandfather. I called him granddaddy. He's from the South, so. But I wanted to be where he was. I wanted to do what he was doing. I wanted to listen to the same stories for the 50th time. You know, I, I still remember the smell of, of his cologne. You know what I mean? because I loved spending time with him. And I can remember as a, a really young boy, you know, I'd get up super early and, and I would go wait outside his bedroom door for the sound of him waking, whether it was a cough or a sneeze or a whisper to my grandmother, whatever it was, man, I, I waited outside his door for signs of him stirring. And man, when I sensed it, man, I just ran in. I jumped on the bed and I was like, hey, what are we going to do today? Where, where are we going to go? What's going on? You know, just like a little kid, I was excited to be with him. And I just want to kind of be real with you a little bit. Because I want that same level of desire to hear and to be with my heavenly father every morning. I want to wait expectantly to sense his stirring even if it's just a little sound, waiting to rush in and see what he'll say to me. And that's what I want for you as well. Let me pray with you today. Father, I just pray right now as we're gathered in multiple places across our communities, God, that we would remember that we can embrace the quiet that you've called us to this place where we can listen and we can hear from you. God, I just ask that you would help us to embrace it, to be okay with the quiet because that's where you speak. God, this week, will you do that for us? Will you help us embrace it? Father, I pray that our hearts would be right, that we would, we would come ready to receive from you with humility in our heart. God, I pray that we would expect that you would speak to us. Father, I'm just thinking of so many people right now as they're listening to this. God, they've realized that they haven't had an opportunity to just wait quietly with you. And God, as we talk about rest, I, I pray that, God, while we understand rest, that we would understand that it's meant to be spent with you. And God, I pray that you would speak to us the things that will allow us to go deeper with you. Father, I pray for those in our, in our church, God, that they wouldn't be afraid to pick up that shovel and go deep and discover the treasure of who you are. Father, this next week, God, I'm praying for people to discover you in a whole new way as you reveal yourself as we step into the obedient place of rest with you. Father, we love you and we thank you, God, that your word always instructs us on where you've called us to be. 
God, would you help us each to step up to that place? God, I'm so excited for people to know you in a deeper, more real and tangible way. Thank you for that, Jesus. As you continue to pray and just kind of process through what God's talking to you about right now in this moment, I want to speak to some of you that, you know, you maybe have never realized that there's a God in heaven that desires a relationship with you. Maybe you've thought of a God in heaven that looked to condemn you or or, or, or say you're guilty of something or just point out your faults. Listen, you need to throw that notion away and understand that God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to live on this earth, to walk on this planet perfect in every way so that he could take your penalty for your sin. And Jesus did that. He went and he died on a cross. He, he died a, a, a sinner's death. He was laid in a tomb, but man, there's so much more. He came back to life to prove to you that he has the power to forgive your sin, to restore that relationship with a God that desires to spend time with you, to know you, and for you to know him. Man, God's got the best in store for you. The Bible says that we've all sinned. We fall short of what God's desire is for us. And the only way to restore that is through Jesus Christ. But the Bible also says that he's faithful and he's just, and that if we'll confess our sins, he'll forgive us. So I wanna invite you today that if you've never done that, I want you to know a heavenly father that desires to speak to you and the first step as he is knocking on the door of your heart today, is that you would make the decision to give your life to him. It's as simple as saying a prayer and telling him that you recognize your need for him, you recognize that only he can save you, and that you desire that relationship with him. I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and I would just invite you, if that's you, to say, a prayer similar to what I'm going to lead you in, or you can just repeat the exact same words. The point being, man, mean it from your heart. The Bible said he's faithful and he's just, and he'll forgive you. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you for those that are at this very moment making a decision to give their life to you. So Father, would you forgive me of my sin? Would you make me brand new? Jesus, would you come into my life and begin to speak to me? God, would you begin a new relationship with me? I'm so thankful, Jesus, that you make me new, that you promise to forgive when I confess my sin. Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing in my life. And I'm excited for the future. In Jesus' name, amen.